A lot of people think I have the greatest job in the state, hunting and fishing and all that. I'm a little nervous right now. You can bring it in, Godfrey family. For the outdoor fair, we're gonna go through a show here with a lot of the attractions. One of the attractions is one that makes me a little bit nervous, Boo Boo the Bear. Now, <laughs> I'm, we have not done this sitting right here. I just as soon only do it once. Chuck Godfrey, have a seat. Oh, Boo Boo likes that mountain by Tom Wolf. He's eating it, for crying out loud. Don Godfrey and Chuck Jr. Uh, these are the folks who are gonna be at the outdoor fair this week. He has no teeth, correct? Some. Right. Some teeth? He, oh, he Lord. He has no fangs. He has no fangs? This is a live Michigan black bear that's how old? Oh, you know what it is? I have gum in my pocket. <laughs> I don't have it in my pocket anymore. Oh, Lord, I hope I don't have any more. He smelled it, didn't he? Uh -huh. He likes gum. How, how big is Boo Boo? He weighs 260 pounds. And, and Boo Boo stinks. I didn't mean that, Boo Boo. <laughs> this does make me nervous. We're going to be back for a couple minutes talking with you folks and Boo Boo, but he is rather well behaved right now. Uh, and he's going to be at the outdoor fair. Uh, I guess we're just going to have to go to the opening of the show while I slip out of here. You calm him down and we'll be back. It's Thursday night. Time for Michigan Outdoors. From the rugged shore and woodland. The outdoor fair this weekend at Houghton Lake, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The first thing you're going to see at the high school grounds off M55 is the muzzleloaders village. Similar to what you see at weekend muzzleloader shoots around the state. That's the Lansing Muzzleloading Gun Club. I invite you to spend some time at their village, and at certain times of day, you'll be able to try a muzzleloader yourself in the shooting range. And if you'd like to try a big bore handgun and touch it off at a metallic silhouette target, Tim Farragon will be there on Saturday and Sunday, and he'll be willing to let you try one. It's a lot of fun. Here's a nice shot by you, Fred. Bang. Nice going. Now, if you've never fired a shotgun before or if you're bothered by recoil, this is the man to see, Sam Johnson. He developed a recoil pad for your shoulder. He'll be there letting people try a shotgun and try his pad, which takes the kick out of off your shoulder. An amazing product. It really works. Mm -hmm. We'll also have a sport there with no kick, but it's fun. Slingshots, an upcoming sport that's blue skein you see right there. The world's champ. He'll put a slingshot in your hand and give you a lesson, show how to hit a target just like he put one in my hand and gave me a lesson. What you have to do is you have to take up a position similar to what an archer does. Mm -hmm. Standing 90, basically standing 90, 90 degrees. degrees what you shoot at. Okay. I anchor, I drip under my cheek and I aim with my left eye. Okay, what, what, my right eye. what do I aim though? What am I going to be aiming? Uh, use this part right here of the slingshot. Uh -huh. The edge of it. And put it on the target? Come, yeah. Put it right on the target. Go like back there where you can only see one band with your left eye. Yeah. Then you're straight and when you get that right on the target you release. You let go, okay. Take one of these balls. And try to hold your position for a second after you release. Just keep your voice. Okay, sort of a follow through then. That's right. That's, okay, that's right. here we go. Prevent you from shooting underneath. Well, I was right over the top. Fishing isn't really considered a shooting sport, but speed casting is. Hit the ring once in 60 seconds and you can win a prize, hit it more often than anyone else, and win a weekend at the Birch Lodge on Higgins Lake, meals and lodging included. Berkeley Triling is holding this contest just like they do every year at the boat show, but at the outdoor fair it will take place all day, every day, at the Limberlost Dock right across the street from the high school on Houghton Lake itself. You know, Bob, also at the Fish Factory, you'll see our Michigan Outdoors boat at the Outdoor Fair. And if your boat's on the lake, pull it up to the Limberlost Dock where the Coast Guard Auxiliary will give you a free courtesy examination. They'll give you tips and ideas that aren't mandatory, but they're really helpful in making your boat safer on the water. If your boat's on a trailer, drive it up to Spicer's Boat City next to the high school and across the street from Limberlost. The Coast Guard will be there, too, giving safety checks to boats on trailers. If the conditions are right, Ed, you got to see this. We're going to have a barefoot water skiing demonstration during the day. That's right on Houghton Lake, Limberlost Dock. And right there, too, on the water, Joe Delaney and his retrievers. Last year, Joe's dogs were really popular at the outdoor fair. He's going to be working on the water this year. Okay, now we're okay. getting ready for the long run here. We're going to make uh, some 100-yard retrieves, um, <clears throat> which the field trial people really do great. You know, if you own a bird dog, you want to learn how to be good. Join a field trial club. That's one of the greatest things you can do. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, signal for retrieving dummies. Okay, now hold on there. Can you, can you see uh, where Kathy is way down there? She's got a couple of dummies there, and uh, Joe's going to give her a, a cue. Let me get on the other side here. Joe's going to give her a cue to throw a dummy out there, and this dog's going to rip like crazy down into do the field. We're going to do a couple hundred yard retrieves. Okay. Back. 
at that dog go? How fast did that dog run? She can hit 25 miles an hour in, in three jumps. Now, she's been running a lot today, so uh, she's maybe not quite up that fast, but look at that. Beeline. She's made about 25 retrieves today. She oh. a, that whistle brings her back real quick, huh? Oh, yeah. She's, uh, I like to use a lot of body English and, you know, a lot of complimentary language. Good, uh -huh. Punchy. That's a girl. Yeah, good, girl. good dog. Good girl. What a beautiful Bird dog. Love to perform. And, uh, it's Look fun at that. To, it's fun to uh, have a happy tail. Good yeah. Girl. Good girl. Nice looking dog. Good. Of course, last year Joe was working there in the athletic field, but this year he's down on Houghton Lake at the Limberloss Dock. And this year at the athletic field, Ed? We'll also see this man, Chuck Lowe. He's from Holly. And Jim Bosham with setters and pointers. You'll see dogs on points and retrieving on land, everything from pups to finished field champions. You know, those dogs are always a hit. There's going to be a lot of puppies there, too, people mm -hmm. with many different breeds, maybe a dozen or so. But archery is going to be a big part of the outdoor fair, thanks to the Flint Bowman. Ron Mast and his club have put together dozens, and I mean dozens, of events. We'll have a target archery tournament be held for anybody interested. A Stroh's professional tournament will be held where the pros will compete for cash prizes. Then there's a whole array of other bow hunting events using murals and 3D the camera, targets. This is the type of shots that we're going to have up there the outdoor fair and I gotta put the arrow through there and try to score on the vital areas. This is a lot of fun. You're also gonna have uh, some sitting shots and there'll be sitting shots and meal shots also, Fred. Okay. Oh nice. Well, we'll see how it goes and that's I'll hit the styrofoam and I'll try to hit him right in the vital area. Nice shot. Nice shot. Huh? Nice shot. Okay. Good score. Good score. There's going to be 14 of those targets. 14 right? of those, Fred. There'll be between, uh, there'll be some deer and some uh, bear. We're going to have a, a mixture of uh, deer and bear. Okay, do, do they use uh, target points or have to be brought be field tips. These will be okay. field tips. Okay. See what the score is. You get one shot per? One shot per target. Okay, look at this. Complete a with real live antlers. Here, and this is called the Golden Arrow 3D. Let's take a look and see what you got here. Pull the arrow out. Liver. Well, what do you think? You got a partial lung and liver. Okay, well, what would that score? That score a three? A three. Because in three, a three here. If right. you are an archer, you like to shoot for fun, and you don't mind a crowd watching now and then, bring your bow and compete in a wide range of novelty events. Here's one, for example, archery poker. Five shots at a deck of cards, the best poker hand wins. They'll also have turkey shoots and boar shoots at silhouette targets at varying distances. That's a real challenge. How about shooting an apple off a can? That's not as easy as it looks to slice the apple but leave the can standing. That's a lot of fun. Then the Flint Bowman will provide flu-flu arrows for those of you who want to try the flu-flu balloon shoot. You know, you don't get a chance to shoot into the air very often, so this is going to be a little different test of skill. We're going to have long shots, short shots, novelty shoots, target shoots, competitions, fun events of all sorts. It'll be going on all day, every day. So if you're an archer, remember, put your ball in the car, come up and compete for the trophies and prizes. Everybody's invited. Now, even if you can't shoot or don't shoot, come and watch other shooters try to soak some people you and I know in the dunk tank. It's electronically activated. <laughs> Something different. You know, Bear Archery is going to be there, but Fred Bear won't be. But Bear Archery will be bringing an outdoor shooting range where you can try any of their bows or your own. And they'll also be running a free clinic for tuning and repairing your bow. Now, that's right, no charge. If you have problems with your compound, bring it to the outdoor fair, and Fred Bear experts will have the tools and equipment to repair it for free. Along with a FASCO first aid, these people will be in indoors with their outdoor products. They have supplies for outdoor people who have been needing for years. Flex Gunrod demonstrating their innovative way to clean rifles and shotguns. And speaking of innovations, great for a perch trip, Paul Collins with his de-hooking device for fish. And Ted Kohler with his invention for tying knots and monofilament fishing line. The game tracker people with their string tracker, and of course they're the ones who are bringing our friendly Boo Boo the Bear. And a lot more products too, along with artists like Chuck Denault, who's become quite popular with his deer paintings. Two years in a row, he won the whitetail category in our wildlife art contest, and last year his painting also won our best of show. And let's not forget the taxidermist. Here's Brad Bruce. He'll be there with his award-winning work. He specializes in deer heads and mammals. 
Tom Wolf is always a hit. He's our Michigan Outdoors fish taxidermy winner up here at the Fish Factory Houghton Lake. This beautiful trout, which won him state honors, just swept the national competition, by the way. So see that winning exhibit right up there at the fair. Tom, you've been on the show a number of times before. I want to congratulate you for this mount, which took first in the fish category in the Michigan Taxidermy Association, and the public voted it, what? People's Choice. People's Choice. Mm -hmm. I tell you, that says something for your work, Tom. A beautiful brown trout. I imagine this is probably a trade secret, how you make the water, yeah. uh, make this appear to be water. You're going to reveal that up at the Wildlife Art Expo at Sugarloaf? Uh, no. Weekend after next? <laughs> You're not? It's an illusion that I'll reproduce, but I can't At some up. future, it, well, you yeah, could Maybe down up. the road someday. Maybe you'll find it. You can Good old Charlie Spreeman's always a lot of fun to talk to, and this year in his booth, he'll be showing how he makes gloves, coats, and vests from deer skin, something thousands of hunters are really interested in. And Bob, speaking of deer, how about commemorative bucks of Michigan? There, they'll be there. They'll display a, a, a whole line of record heads, including this one. You mean the state record typical, Lester Bowen's tip, uh, typical buck. As far as anyone knows, there's never been a bigger one taken anywhere in the state. And if you know anyone or you have access to a set of antlers that has not been registered with commemorative bucks, bring them to the fair. If they're the biggest of the weekend, you will take home $100 savings bonds. Just make sure they're Michigan deer antlers. He's going to show Land of the Woodland Drummer on Friday and Sunday, full-length film. The Marsh, A Quiet Mystery, will be shown on Saturday. Both of these were photographed in Michigan. And on Saturday night at our banquet, we talked Tom into giving us a sneak preview of his Alaskan film that hasn't even been released yet. Moose, grizzly, salmon, that film is tops. I tell you, Tom Sterling is going to be a big hit at the fair every day with one of his full-length films. Keep in mind that we are just going over the highlights of the outdoor fair, hitting the high spots. There's an awful lot of people who are going to be up there, and you can pick up my old fishing buddy, Bill Swagler. Bill, don't gonna tell you, people think that I go everywhere and know everything about the state. You got it on me. How many calls do you make a week to charter captains and guides and so on? Uh, at least 75, maybe 100, depending on how much time I've got. That's why I rely on Bill for a lot of my fishing information. This weekend, for example, up at the Outdoor Fair, people are probably going to ask you more than any other question, where should I go fishing? That's right. Where is the best fishing? That's what they want to know. But speaking about pheasants, the governor on his recent ch uh, trip to China met with the provincial officials of the province of Sichuan. They talked about uh, our pheasant needs here in Michigan and shored up a deal which should bring about 250 adult pheasants to the state of Michigan uh, where they can take eggs and raise up chicks to be planted on areas across southern Michigan next spring. Time habitat biologist, wetlands habitat specialist, and duck specialist for the Department of Natural Resources, wildlife Life Division has just, uh, he's retired under the 80 and out program, many state workers have taken advantage of, and he's just taken an assignment and a new job with the Michigan Wildlife Habitat Foundation, a nonprofit organization. They do a lot of good work, of course they work a lot in wetlands, and one of our biggest wetlands is the dead, st dead stream <laughs> swamp up there at Houghton Lake where they have uh, bears, bears. Just big like boo-boo bears. bears. Yeah, boo-boo, <laughs> we're going to be back to boo-boo in not too long, but Ed, why don't we get out the Club Digest here? which most of our viewers who have sent for it have in their hands by now. Mm -hmm. And look at the mailbag. Okay, here's a question from Ionia. I moved here from Nebraska about two years ago. A friend told me that pike lose their teeth in the late summer to early fall. Is this true? Absolutely. It is. Now, I know you've heard that it's a myth. Pike lose their teeth all year round, though. Mm -hmm. They naturally do. They have rows of teeth almost like sharks. They're backing up their other teeth, and they continually move forward. Teeth fall out. But at this time of year, if you've been fishing in the areas where I've been fishing, you're likely to find pike, that, I'm being a little facetious, but pike that have teeth broken off mm -hmm. because they've been hooked, they've been battled, and the teeth will break off during a battle with the lure. Mm -hmm. And this also happens at this time of year. The uh, chubs, the suckers, the uh, carp are a little larger. That's right. And the DNR biologists tell me that uh, when the pike are chasing them, grabbing them, they'll actually knock teeth no. off on those scales. Mm -hmm. So they do lose teeth. But it's not like, you know, falling out or anything like that. Their, their gums don't get real sore and they refuse well, they to do. bite because they do of after they get Eppinger's <laughs> disease from me. I after see. throwing the daredevil at him. Right. Uh, in our Club Digest, our Master Angler of the Week, his photo right here, this is Ron Thomas. And he's hoisting up a 37-pound Chinook salmon. That was the largest one of 1983 off Little Point Sobble in Lake Michigan. And that's an inspiration to all of us, but I think we'll get a 40-pounder this year. A smoked salmon recipe coming up. But first of all, here's a question about the danger of shooting sports. We have a lot of shooting sports at the Outdoor Fair. See if you can answer this.
smoking fish, smoking salmon. There you are with a Lake Michigan, it's probably a Chinook salmon, a little Chinook or a coho, and you just stake the salmon, basically. Yes, I stake it. Leave the skin on and the bones in? Leave the skin on, yes. Oh, is it better that way, or is it better to remove all those extraneous parts? It's better to leave the skin on. I trim the belly, the belly fat, but mm -hmm. I leave the skin on. That seems to bind the uh, pieces better while they're smoking and, and after you handle them later. We don't eat the skin, of course. Oh, you peel all that off? Before we eat it. OK, you put it in steaks about, what, inch and a half, two inches thick? That's right. Could you smoke a whole salmon? Sure you could. Sure, I smoke whole salmon sometimes, but uh, most people prefer to have them in chunks. And uh, they're a lot easier to handle, a lot easier to uh, eat that way. But sometimes when we have a banquet, uh, we may wish smoke to a have whole a whole one. salmon. Yes. Well, here's the brine. You put in about a quart of water and what, a cup of salt? Yes, we're using a quart of water, uh, a half cup of salt, and a half cup of sugar to each quart. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, I have two quarts of water there, so uh, we're using a cup of salt and a cup of sugar. Now, the sugar, you combine brown sugar and white sugar. Yes. Why? That, gi that gives us a better golden color to the finished product. It doesn't change the flavor, though? Not much, no. Just the golden brown color, which is important. Food, smoked, smoked foods are something that are nice to look at. Oh, sure. It's a visual appeal that, uh, that helps make it taste better. Okay, and then we put the rest of the water in. What function does the brine have? Could you smoke food without brining it? Sure, sure you could. But the brine flavors it, and mm -hmm. the brine also serves to preserve it. The salt in there preserves yes, it? Yes, the salt preserves it. Now, the sugar sort of, uh, oh, softens the uh, effect of the salt. Uh -huh. That's why we put the sugar in there. OK, so you put the fish pieces in the brine for how long? Oh, 12, 14 hours or so, overnight. Overnight. What if you put it in, what if you left it in for a whole day? Would that make it any better or would it make it worse? It would make it much saltier. Uh -huh. So you'd have to rinse it more, and then you're rinsing the brine ingredients right back out. Mm -hmm. So you're defeating the purpose of using brine. So 12 or 14 hours in the brine. How would you, do you brine a whole salmon? Yes, sometimes a couple of them at once. At once, huh. Clean off your grill. Now, the rack in the smoker, you're using a little chief smoker here, which is one of the main... Uh, selling smokers on the market. Get that ready, you rinse off the salmon, and I know you advocate just rinsing it off lightly. That's right, Slushing. just to get the salt crystals off the surface. Okay, and you put them on some paper towel and just pat it off. Right, and, and that speeds up the drying process a little bit. But you don't put it in the smoker right away. No, we'll let it dry, uh, air dry we call it, for about an hour. Why? Well, the pellicle is going to form, Fred. Okay, pellicle. That's you've told me about that before. That's the uh, sort of a film or a, a, a sticky texture on the outside as it's drying. Actually, it's the proteins rising to the surface of the fish, and it'll look like a coat of clear varnish mm -hmm. after about an hour. It'll be sticky to the touch, and that'll prevent the milky substance from coming out of the fish. So you want to dry it for about an hour, let the pellicle form. And then into the smoker. What types of chips do you recommend? I know there's all kinds on the market. Right. OK, we use hickory most of the time. Now, you can use any hardwood, mm -hmm. apple or cherry, uh, any hardwood. You can't use the, uh, the wood from needle-bearing trees. Oh, like pine trees. Too much pitch too in Too much that. pitch in yes. there. So the hardwoods. And now, after about an hour, you can see. It looks like a little bit of varnish on that fish. It is. See, it's sticky to the touch. <laughs> you can see how it's stuck to your fingers there. <laughs> That's right. OK, but that, that's ready to go in the smoker. Oh, she's ready to go in right now. I'm preparing the smoker right now, getting it smoking before I put the fish in. And you'll smoke it for how long? Depending upon the uh, thickness of the pieces, probably 10 to 12 hours, Fred. Do you check the fish during the smoking process? Yes, to see? I do. Uh, sometimes uh, I may take a, a thin piece out after nine hours and leave the thicker pieces in for hmm. two or three more hours. And that's the way it's done. Well, after that recipe, Boo Boo is eating. He's not eating smoked salmon. He'd probably like it, don't <laughs> probably. you think? Oh, yeah, he'd like that, it. I wish we had time to go into bringing some salmon on the set and all that, but I don't think it would be a great idea. You no. know, I think the thing to do is come up to the outdoor fair and see Bob Musselman. He'll have smoked salmon samples on Saturday only. But right now, Boo Boo is having some M&Ms, which totally changed his personality. 
I mean, he's almost cute. They must feed those animals on TV, Grizzly Adams. And they must feed those suckers constantly. <laughs> Lots of M&Ms, know. must be. Because he was, oh, I wouldn't want one for a pet. And I, this is the first time on this show that I had been nervous. When Glenn Dutterer brought the ducks and things, <laughs> hey, no big deal. I do that all day. Now, is he, he isn't, uh, you know, going to nip me or anything like he was a few minutes ago. No, he's calmed down. He's, Ooh, uh... I can feel his muscle there. They are muscular animals. And their hair feels like, it, they're, they are related to pigs. Uh-huh. And they feel like it. When people come up to the outdoor fair, you folks, if you think you'd like to come up and pet Boo Boo, uh, could they do it safely? Well, probably not, because we have him roped off, and, and we, uh, sometimes we let someone pet him, but if everyone pets him, he'll bite somebody. Oh. He's, you know, he's... So you uh, have to use your judgment right. up there. That's yeah, right. very few people get to touch him. They can see him real close and take lots of pictures. As far as touching him, it, would, it wouldn't be a good idea. Come here, Chucky. Stand here. Look at, look at how tall you are. You don't seem at all nervous. Are you? Mm, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> no, does he get nervous around the bear? No, they ha the kids have respect for him. You know, they, all of our animals. They know when to leave him alone and when to play with him. Stand when, him Make him stand way up. Was it Chuck's He's idea warm. to get this bear for a pet or yours? Yeah, sort of. It was his, but I wanted one, too, because a friend of ours had one, and I liked it, you know, so we figured, well, why not? Of course, this takes permits from the DNR, yeah. and this, uh, was this bear, did it come from other bears from a zoo or something? No, we from bought a licensed from a private breeder. Animal. It have to come from licensed breeders to mm. ever obtain them. Will his temperament improve over the years or get worse? I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> well, you can write me and tell me about it. <laughs> we will call you. <laughs> well, I'm able to touch this bear right here. You'll be able to see at the outdoor fair what, what they look like up close. Their eyes are interesting. They're teeny little yeah. eyes. They can't see very well? No. They no, say They have that. real poor vision. But their nose, huh. they can smell real good. No, they smell. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> this bear stinks. It does. Well, that's characteristic of bears. You can hear them breathing. Right. Of course, people will be able to do that up at Holton Lake. And you'll be there Friday, <laughs> Saturday, and Sunday uh -huh. with Boo Boo. This is the Godfrey family. You coming too, Chucky, aren't you? Huh? He's not sure. <laughs> He's not sure? Hey, you've got to come up and see me go down in the dunk tank. <laughs> yeah. You no. want to see me do that? Tom, you'll be there. I'll be there. Okay, I'm going to do that next. All right, this is the fun of a dunk tank. This is going to be a good time. Oh, prime and Natalie, look at these things. Get a shot of these turkeys. Oh, yeah. See, it's no sweat. In a dunk tank is no problem. There's virtually no chance. You see, being on television, they are so intimidating that there's no way they can knock me in the water. That's what I like. Here's oh, the guy. Oh, well, stabilizer. No fair. Oh, yellow arrows are silly. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, 